So, let's go for this treasure chest that I completely forgot near the end of the last part. There are even harps everywhere, just to give you a clue of what you're supposed to do if you're too dumb to figure it out by yourself. Anyway, it's a joy pendant! I thought that it was supposed to be a, a small key, but then in editing, I noticed that there was another room up there other than the one that was locked, and that was where the key was supposed to be. So anyway, let's just pick up Millie. I said pick her up. Thank you very much. Yeah, Link isn't nearly as adept at picking up chicks than in Chugga Conroy's LP, I can tell you that much. Anyway, I think I remember what this room is, and yep. There are five coffins in there, and the key is in one of them. Ha! First one, right off the bat. It's not random, by the way. It's the same one every time. I just didn't remember it was in this one. I just got lucky. But in some of the others, we have Redeath, and shit! God damn it! This is what happens when you miss that jump slash. It's usually supposed to be foolproof, but when it's right next to a wall, it can be much more complicated because you can hit the wall sometimes, like I almost did there. DIE! Okay, this one, there's none. Instead we have a yellow rupee. Now, um, okay, some magic. I'm not quite full and I'm gonna need it soon, so I'm gonna take it. So, JUMP! Here we go, just keep attacking. I'm always sort of wor uh, worried when I repeatedly hit the wall like that because uh, I always get the feeling it's, it's gonna have an opening to attack me and it wastes some of my life as well as some of my time, so not very good. Anyway, we got the key we were looking for, so we can move on to that room that was locked that we ran into in the last video, video and I stupidly forgot about it. So, let's head in there. And we get, uh, actually, a jump cut, which means that this is an important room. Indeed, we can barely take a step, and suddenly, new enemy! This is Astolfos, returning from many other games before it, most notably Ocarina of Time. These aren't- Whoa! I smashed it, I smashed it into two halves. This isn't exactly what you're supposed to do. You're just supposed to hit it until the head comes off. Once the head is alone, you can attack it for, you know, actual damage, and you gotta hurry, you gotta, you gotta hurry up before it uh, regenerates itself, which is gonna happen if you let, if you take too much time to take down the head. Anyway, now that we've beaten this one, we got two more. Fortunately, they're very, very, very slow, so you can take them separately. I'm just gonna get out of the way because it's got that whirlwind attack, which is quite nasty and hurts like hell. Like it's uh, like it's regular attack, which we just took right to the face. But uh, come on, come on, yeah, here we go. Now the last one. Come on, ow. One heart and a half. It's pretty rare, you know, something in this game that hits for more than a quarter of a heart, but these bastards can manage it. Oh man, I've already wasted a lot of time. Please, oh my god, and it's, it was right next to a wall. I had no chance to finish it off. Eh, okay, fine. We're gonna have to redo this all over again and presumably take a hit. No! Um, okay. <laughs> the, the upper part when... How come it's full again? Game! God damn it! Why can't you can't you even keep track of the monster's HP? Well, it doesn't matter because I managed to get it this time. It's just sort of aggravating when the enemy regenerates to full for no reason. Okay, so we got some health, which is good because once again, it's something that we might need in the very near future. Anyway, for defeating these three Stalfos, we get the dungeon treasure! The mirror shield, and if you look close enough, Link already has it on its on his back. Even though you know he's showing it to uh, the uh, disembodied item describer, I guess. Anyway, I guess you know what you're supposed to do now. You're you're supposed to draw your sword in this game in order to even be able to use the mirror shield. Just something very minor that I thought I would point out, and. And yeah, it's going to help greatly when it comes to solving those light puzzles. And since we have two uh, light redirections now, uh, those puzzles are going to get obviously a bit more complicated. 
now, I gotta deal with these fuckers again, because there is something that we can do in this room now that we have uh, both the mirror shield and uh, Millie's harp. And yes, I, I, I know it, uh, it might be it might sound a bit stupid to uh, hit the moblins while letting the pose uh, beat me up, but uh, it trust me when I say it's a lot better than the opposite because those moblins when they when they try to attack you they have a lot of freaking range and they do a lot more damage than pose. So this is my preferred order for taking them down. And can I just aim at this thing properly? Thank you. I don't know if it was because of the controller, the emulator, or whatever. It, it, it was a little trickier than it normally is when I play on an actual GameCube with a real GameCube controller. So, let's get back up and um, kill that last Poe. At least it's a good thing that I don't need Medley to do so now. Come on. Come on! It, it looks like it's walking right through the light. Come on! Jesus! Thank you! Okay, so I'm just going to kill this guy. Is there anything in that piñata that I'm that I might need? Nope, not really. So now, there's that uh, sun on the wall, which means that it, it might crumble if we shine some light on it. And now that we have uh, the mirror shield, we're going to be able to do just that. So... Medley, you're going to go up there. Thank you very much. And you're going to light that beam down there so Link can then reflect it. So, let's break down this wall first of all. Come on. Thank you. And now, let's try an expert maneuver. There's a wall over there that we can bust down, as you can see. Can I do it from here? This would be awesome if I could... Yes! All right, this is awesome. So, I'm just going to grab Medley because uh, she can't jump down here by herself if I just call her with R, which is something that we can do. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. And, yeah, in there, look at that! 80 rupees that we can't even carry! Awesome! Now there's more light here, and I'm just going to throw Medley away and give her a mild concussion. You can hear the stars around her head. And just break this down. What you're supposed to do normally to break down the wall with the 80 rupees behind it is to just shine the light there, then have Medley reflect it on that wall. However, I did it the hard way, and I did it pretty quickly, I might add. So, now we're back in this main room. So, now that we have two sources of reflection, we can actually do something about that giant sun with the giant suns for eyes. Um, by the way, th th those lights, where do they come from? I mean, this temple is supposed to be like 20,000 leagues under the sea, and I don't think that it's a, that light is supposed to be able to go that far in the water. So, yeah, it really doesn't make any sense. But wait, it's gonna get far worse when we go deeper into the temple. Anyway, shining those two sun eyes is going to make all the fog go away, and it's going to reveal the path to the basement. But first, one last thing to do on this floor, and it's probably the most annoying. We gotta go back in this room with Floor Masters! And now they, we got Bubbles as well. Oh, great. This is just wonderful. This is wonderful. At least Floor Masters have the courtesy to get out of my way! So, I'm just gonna go in there quickly. And yes, as you, as you can see, I needed the, the mirror shield to do that because I needed to use Medley as a way to uh, push that switch down. And inside we have a lousy joy pendant. You have to defy Floor Masters for a joy pendant. Oh, and by the way, the Floor Masters will, gra will gladly grab Medley anytime, even when you're carrying her. Yeah, they went there. You're you're gonna carry Medley, and then suddenly, 
Floor Master is gonna freaking grab her and put her in some jail cell high up in this room, and it's just bullshit when that happens, so I hope I won't have to show you that, because it's a huge time waster having to come back to this main room every time to rescue her. Now! Another new enemy! Blue Bubbles! These ones you cannot take down with a mere slash of your sword. And uh, these blue flames do the exact same thing as the blue fog from before. They prevent you from attacking, which makes these enemies extra annoying. Also, there is a side path in this room that only leads to a few rupees. So I'm not even going to bother considering you have to defy blue fog and more of these blue bubble fuckers in order to do so. So, yeah, I'm going to pass up on some money, which is understandable, because my wallet's full! Anyway, we made it to another one of these stones that Medley can make crumble with the power of music. Yeah, I don't know how playing a harp makes that stone door crumble. It's magic! It's magic! It's a fantasy world! Let's pretend it actually makes sense! Just for once. And, uh, I don't know in gameplay terms what the idea was, you know, to put it here, because there was another one earlier on that we needed to bust down in order to even get through here. We already have the Earth God's lyrics, so this stone door thingy accomplished exactly nothing. Now, in this room, we got two more re-deads, and this is an excellent place to try uh, the jump slash... A strategy if you need some practice, you know, to evaluate the range properly. This is a great place to do so because even though they're near those pillars, they're not so close that uh, you're actually in danger of fucking these up. Now, you just want to shine some light on these mirrors over there to make those statues crumble. And, okay, here we go. So! Which one will I take? Um, all right, there's another statue that I need to uh, destroy right here. You know what? You've probably been waiting for this part for a long time if you've ever played this game before. So I'm going to throw you a bone. I'm going to start with this one. Blue Fog Maze. Whip Floor Masters. That's right, I got to make it to the end of this maze. And I have to be very careful to not go near any Floor Masters, otherwise, well, I can't strike back, so, yeah, I'm freaking st screwed if they get me. Anyway, we made it all the way to the end, and we get a small key, and the blue fog is now gone. Now you might see on the map, there's another treasure chest. Yes! You have to do exactly that to make it appear. You have to kill all of the Floor Masters. And, okay, this is a mid-range Floor Master, which is as good as you're going to get in this room. I'm going to need the hammer as well. Mid-range Floor Masters, they're not going to grab you instantly uh, when they come out, but they're only going to pop out at mid-range, unlike the one that we faced before, that we actually killed. That was a long-range one. Go back and watch the footage if you want to see the difference. It's very clear. So, this one. Oh, God, I think it's a close range! It's a close range one! Oh, my God, stop it! Oh, great, and now it retreats just as I'm about to attack it! Oh, my God! Oh, man! Same thing happens again. No, 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 I'm dead! Ah, what? Ah, oh, my God! closest encounter with a Floor Master that I've ever had without dying. Okay, this one's a mid-range as well. Okay, these are a little bit easier, but they tend to go away pretty quickly, so you have to not obey your instincts and go away. You gotta stay there and attack as fast as you can before it grabs you. This looks like a close-range one. Nope, mid-range, actually. So, let's just... Kill this one, and we might have the time to kill one more. Yeah, I'm gonna be a, a jackass and cut right in the middle of one of the most intense parts of the game! Oh! You know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm keeping these two fuckers for next time.